Hello everyone, I'm Lee, and welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. As you can see, it's a bit chaotic here. We've got tons of stuff. Things have changed a bit. I haven't sort of given a run around the workshop for a while, so I'll just tell you what's changed and what's going on. This little bay here, we've got the, the Audi TTS that we were doing. It's got the Marlin Motorsport pistons with the Bridgeway rods. Obviously, I've had to do all my sizing and dummy, sort of dummy build, get the piston heights right, so we've got that 40 thou between the piston and the cylinder head, because that is a 30 thou thick gasket crushed. So I've had to take, the pistons were flush, so I've had to take 10 thou off those pistons. Obviously, the reason we do this, guys, as I've said to you, um, said to you before, because obviously we skim the block, by the time we face the head and what have you. Yeah, we need to do a dummy build and obviously make sure that the compression ratio is right, So, which I have done and it is. If the compression ratio is raised by the time you've done the, the piston to head machining, you then have to take a bit out of the bowl. But anyway, that one's all done. Just waiting for a set of thrusts on that, which I can pop in the block afterwards and put that center main cap on and then I've just got to torque the mains, he's all done. The V8, so this is the V8 that's been ongoing for a while. All we're waiting for is the crank assembly to be balanced, which is all done and it will be back tomorrow from CTM Performance. Um, as you know, we can't balance the, the Rover V8s at the minute or any V8 to be honest. So what we do is we size the com rods, then balance them. Same with the pistons, the new pistons. Then what we do is we send a piston ring, a whole piston assembly basically, and a com rod with the crank bearings and bolts, etc., for one cylinder, the crank and all the bits in line, so the clutch, the flywheel, all the relevant bolts and the front pulley, and then they balance that as a one unit. But anyway, that'll be back tomorrow, so Paul's job when he's in on Thursday, which will be tomorrow, because it's Tuesday now, um, he's gonna crack on and start building that because everything's pretty much done. Yeah, okay, this is probably just as good a time as any. He keeps asking me, bless him. Right guys, I would just like to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Carly. So while Isaac is out here cleaning the kit car, which is looking absolutely spiffing, you see he's got his little, um, nice little one series over here. He's been having a few issues with it lately. So he's asked me if we could just plug this thing in, see if we can see any error codes, etc., or clear some code. So that is where this little beauty comes into action. So this adapter, along with the Carly app, is absolutely fantastic for diagnosing or erasing fault codes or finding hidden features within the vehicle. So if we plug the adapter into the car's OBD port, it says turn on your vehicle's engine, which we've done. Um, obviously, we've opened up the app. We're going to connect this to your car. And there we go. We're ready to start. Right, so what we're going to be doing here, Isaac, is just um, seeing if we can diagnose any fault codes. <laughs> so we'll check for issues. Car is being checked. So health status, 22 issues found. Very bad. <laughs> All right. So we've got the dynamic stability control two issues, 10 wow. engine issues. Ideal. Seat electronics two. These are, these are red ones. Um, and then you've got your amber ones, two for the car access system, instrument clusters, two issues, and four issues with the roof. Secondly, live data. You can go onto live data. So you can go onto any of these, ABS, brakes, coolant, cooling, diesel filter, electrical system, you can click on that and then you can select live values and that will read the car live, okay? But my favorite feature, if we go right back to the beginning, to the main thing, uh, coding. So you can unlock hidden features within the car. So features that they don't turn on from the factory. Coding is only available for certain brands or models, mind. So if we check compatibility for coding, so number of compatible ECUs, nine. So we've got all these here. Um, so say lock-in, car access system. We go in there, read out. So comfort eject, off. Um, so most of these are on. Comfort closed door. So you can change these. I won't do it for you, but uh, right. it's amazing really, isn't it? Yeah, that's clever. So it allows you to unlock extra features yeah so it, so it shows you everything that is turned on from the factory or that you've turned on there we go mate 
That's really cool. Looks like you've got some codes to clear. Yeah. So there we go, guys. Absolutely awesome product. And if you are interested in purchasing one of those, just click the link in the description below for your 15% off. And we just want to thank Carly for today's sponsor. Right, the Pinto. Now, the Pinto has been sitting there for a while next to the pre-cross flow, which is all done. That's going back to Malcolm. He's paid for that. So it's going to go on a pallet tomorrow and we'll get that on its way to Malcolm. But the Pinto here, guys, the bottom end has been built for quite some time. See all the bits here. The only thing we've been waiting for is valves. Now, we've had a bit of an issue with the valves. So we've got the cylinder head here. Now, these are the old valve springs. It's, they're a double spring uprated. Um, you can see the the spring caps are anodized, so obviously where people have took the uh, collets out, it's scored it up here, but they're not damaged at all. They just look a little bit scruffy, but, um, uh, but the customer wants to use those. The existing cam is the sort of, I suppose the, the fast road rally cam, the one up from a fast road cam basically. Um, and there's about seven and a half mil of cam lift on this, which equates to about 11 and a half mil of valve lift if you take into consideration the rockers and the ratio there. So what we're doing here and what the problem has been, the inlets are all good. Now we have sleeved these guides with the bronze sleeves that we have up here. So the bronze sleeves, if you haven't seen these before, are basically, like it says on the tin, a bronze sleeve. Now what you do is you ream the existing guide out with the, the reamer that is supplied. Uh, if I show you here, like that, so the top bit follows the existing guide. This reams it out. Then what you do is you, you push a guide sleeve in and then we have a series of balls that go up in about two thous um, and you push a ball down. It spreads the, the uh, bronze and gives you the correct clearance for the valve. So obviously because these are a cast in guide, we can't change the guide, so we've had to sleeve these, but we've done it with tons of stuff. It's very, very successful. And in some respects, a bit more hardware than the original cast iron. Anyway, we've done that. We've cut the seats and got the valves in. Now, no problem on the inlets as far as pocketing goes on the face, but we did have a problem with the valves pocketing on the exhaust. And the main reason for that, if I turn this over, you can see you can see now they all look very very good these are sort of sitting at the correct height now um, but the old valves if i get an old valve these are the old valves this is a big valve head you're bigger on the inlet you're bigger on the exhaust now when we took this thing apart you can see by the time we'd face these valves they're a little bit pitted on the face anyway but by the time we'd face these valves with a 45 degree you can see on the very edge there it's gone down to like a razor so these are no good um, and they were pocketed right back in the head. Now, the problem is with that, especially on one of them, by the time we'd faced it, someone had obviously faced these big time before and where they faced it down to a razor, what happens if you keep facing it, all it does is take the diameter down on the outside and these things were down about, or one of them was down about a mil and a half on the, on the diameter of the head compared to the rest. So what happens then is it pockets it just disappears down the port so it's sat right back in the port i did look for new valves first place i go is burton because obviously burton do a lot of ford stuff and fast road ford stuff and obviously the big valves now the one big problem i had was matching these valves up and the reason for that is the overall length was slightly different the head diameter was slightly different but we were running or these valve stems are an 8.7 whereas standard they're eight the reason it's an 8.7 is apparently Ford used to do that back in the day. Um, so they just, instead of sleeving the guides, they would just ream the guide out to 8.7. Um, and once upon a time, you could buy the valves and just stick them in and job done. But you can't unfortunately get those valves anymore. So what I've had to do is buy these valves, which are the same size head. They're an 8.7 stem, but they're a lot longer. They're actually out of a Volvo, uh, but they are an exhaust valve. So they've got the correct head around this side perfect perfect match to this and what i've done is i've chopped the back and i've put my own if you see here i've put my own collets in so i have to turn the end down to eight mil from 8.7 and then i've put my own collet grooves in made a little tool and those collets sit in absolutely perfect if i show you if i just show you 
the collet sitting in the grooves there. You can see that absolutely bang on. Um, so yeah, I've made those, made them to the correct length and you get the, the length from the back of the head correct. Now these three, absolutely fine. Sat them back to the correct height. The reason you need to get these to the correct height is one, so you've got the, when the collets are in and the springs are on, you get the correct tension on the spring. But what you wanna be aiming for or looking at is the coil binding. So because we've got 11 and a half mil of lift on that camshaft, what you do is you measure from the platform to the top of the valve. Then you compress the spring with this and then you measure it again. And what you wanna be left with is from the top point to coil binding, so fully compressed, you want to be aiming for about a millimetre or 40 thou, or maybe a little bit more overall length compared to your, to your cam lift. So if we've got a 12 mil, say if you've got 11 and a half mil cam lift, uh, sorry, valve lift, you want to be having at least about 12 and a half, maximum to sort of 13 mil of um, travel before it coil binds. So to do that, what they used to do is you can shim the base here. You can obviously bring the valve through to get it up, but then you need to shim the base here maybe. Um, but anyway, got these two with one little shim down the bottom, which are the original shims here. With those little shims in there, we are getting about 50 thou of extra travel before, um, before valve is fully, the valve spring is fully compressed. Except for this one, guys. A lot of people who didn't know that or didn't take the time to check it all, if they had just threw this head together, um, this valve here would have coil bound, probably snapped the end of the valve, dropped a valve and blew the engine up for definite. Now, the reason I know that is because I've had to, I've put all these new valves in and because I've checked them, I've had to face the face of the valve. So this bit here, I've put, extra 45 because there was there was sort of about a mil and a half nearly two mil of depth right on the end edge of the valve so I've, there's plenty of meat so i've had to take about half a mil off these valves to get them where i want to get them um, but if you'd have just chucked these valves in that one would have definitely dropped a valve eventually snapped the end off of the, the valve etc and dropped the valve through and the reason for that is is because that was once upon a time pocketed which brings the valve further through this way to get the, the initial tension on that spring, what they've done, someone has made a spacer out of steel um, and they've put that in the base here. So to look at, you wouldn't have noticed. Um, it looked just like the rest. It did sit a bit higher, having looked at it twice, but you wouldn't have noticed that. You'd have put this in there. This spacer was in. Obviously, I've got that out because um, that is two mil thick. So we were only running about initially about 10 mil, um, nine and a half, 10 mil of, of compression of that spring, um, which obviously is not enough. You're just gonna co coil bind on that on full lift and eventually it's gonna shear off up here um, and cause all sorts of damage. So I've got that out, put my shim in there, um, got my valve height right, and that is all the same, they're all the same now. We've got um, about 13 mil of travel on that spring before it coil binds. So yeah, that's why it's very, very important, guys, to thoroughly check. Although it's only a Pinto, a lot of people would have just chucked this together, wouldn't have checked your, your spring compression heights and all the rest of it, and um, that could have happened. It was like on the last video when I said about those 20-valve um, VW cylinder heads, making sure that the spring is not sitting on the platform above the base. Um, because it just gives that extra. It's about a mil and a half, two mil high, and it's, it just coil binds the spring, and eventually the, it shears the top off the valve. The valve drops in the cylinder, and you can imagine all sorts of damage happens. So, yeah, we were lucky on this one, but that is why, that is the difference really between a blueprinted sort of race-built engine and a standard throw-it-together engine. Um, you never take anything for granted. Although this thing was running, Obviously with the new valves, it ain't gonna be running for long. So remember that if you're ever putting a cylinder head together, it's important to check absolutely everything and get all your measurements correct. Well, unfortunately guys, that's all we've got time for today. Um, stay tuned for the next video where we explain why we have this Land Rover Series 1 engine back. Not great. 
But until another video, thanks a lot for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.